Hi, welcome to the 10 minute video summary of the message that was shared at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on the 21st of August 2016. My name is Don Vold, I'm the senior pastor at the church and for the next uh, several minutes I'd like to share the highlights of the message from this morning's service. Uh, we took a good uh, amount of time and just prayed for one another this morning and uh, so uh, we had some time for, for the, the message but uh, today's message is probably a little shorter than, than many of them. Last week I, I, I gave you sort of a warm up to uh, where we were going uh, with this message message and it's just all about you know what are we becoming you know that we're changing we know the world around us is changing we see it reflected in the elections we see it uh, reflected in the culture uh, you know that there are big changes afoot uh, but you know how are we changing and, and that's uh, you know really what I think God is, is wanting to talk to us about and uh, last week we just very quickly went over some things and I want to just visit a couple parts of it but, but you know there, we're probably always changing you know there's a drift in life but the drift in life, at least in this world, okay, that drift is contrary to God. And so, you know, the Bible warns us, okay, in Hebrews 2, 1, it says we must pay much closer attention to what we've heard, all right? That, that, that word that's being declared is so important for us to be in the places where the, the, the word of God is being declared and where we're being exhorted uh, in terms of, like, how we should be living in response to this word and being taught, all right? And so it says we, we need to pay much closer attention to what we've heard, all right, so that we do not drift away from it. Okay, there's a drift in the world. People are drifting, and uh, you know we don't want to drift with them. You know we want to be much more intentional uh, in asking God to change us in, in, in ways that we need to change, but also in maintaining those sets. You know, what's the set of your heart? And I said this morning's service how that the first set is that you know that your sins are forgiven by grace through faith, that, that, that God has forgiven your sins. Jesus Christ went to the cross for your sins. He died to, to pay the price for them, and that uh, you use the faith that God gave you to exercise it and to receive the grace that he has given to us, that our sins are forgiven, and that we have eternal life. Okay, so that's the first set. You don't have that set right, all the rest that you're trying to do isn't going to work that well. But uh, <coughs> every day, okay, we are setting and, and resetting that normal because, you know, the Word of God tells us we have authority. Colossians 3 2 tells us to set our minds, set our affections on things that are of God, all right? So, uh, so we have authority to, to, to have certain things that just aren't going to change. We are going to set them, uh, you know, so that they, they are they're, they're fixed, okay? We are steadfast in these things, all right? That we look at the world around us and, you know, what is, what are we, how are we supposed to respond to this? You know, the, all, the, all the anger and all the, the spewing of hatred and things that we hear around us, you know, the denunciations of anybody who dares disagree with, uh, you know, what seems to be the popular view. Uh, you know, it's, it's just, a, it's a changing world that's around us, but I believe in the midst of this, God would have our hearts. That's what he wants. He wants to have our hearts so that he can make us uniquely his in the midst of all this, so that he can reveal himself through us. All right, so uh, the uh, last point in, in what I shared last week, just but the, our, our, our nation's in trouble. You know, but our God, we shouldn't fear because our God is our refuge, our strength. And he's, uh, it says in uh, Psalm 46, 1, that he is a very present help in a time of trouble. And so God's going to be there. God's in the midst of all that. You know, you read the scriptures and most of the people in the scriptures, most of the time where God is speaking to them are, are in troubling times. All right, that, you know, the, the world has been through a lot of trouble and God hasn't shied away from it. He's revealed himself uh, powerfully in the midst of those difficulties. Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand so that we could walk in them. All right, so if God is a very present help, how does he help? I think we love the stories in scriptures, uh, you know, when, when the angels show up, you know, when, when God says, oh, this battle isn't yours, I'll fight it, you know, and, 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 you know, literally his angels show up, you know, when Elijah says, you know, open the eyes of my servant so that he can see that we're surrounded by a greater army uh, than the army that's come up against us. We love when the angels show up, but more often, you know, what God is looking for and the thing we need to concern ourselves with is, is those times when God intends to use us. And so he has uh, made us his workmanship. We are all a little piece of Jesus Christ. To the world around us. You know, none of us is going to manifest everything of Jesus to everybody around us, but each of us has an authority, a, a gift uh, that, that we can use uh, to be at least a part of, of God revealing himself to people. And uh, that we are his witnesses. Acts 1.8 tells us that when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, uh, that we are going to have, have power and we're going to be his witnesses. Okay, we're his witnesses in the midst of all this. You know, we're not to shy away or go find a place to hide. We're his witnesses. We're supposed to step out. All right. And so uh, over here uh, in, in uh, 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11, we, we look at this thing where it says that we have this gift to use in this world. But we have this gift to use in a world that Jesus described as waxing cold. He said that the, in, the, in the last times, the love of many will become cold. All right. And so we are called in the midst of that to be different. 
and we have authority in Jesus' name to be the different ones. All right, and so 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11 says this, the end of all things is near. Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. All right, above all, above all, keep fervent in your love for one another. While the world's love has grown cold, you, you, you stay fervent, okay? In fact, you become more fervent, more, you know, hot in your love for one another. That, that this is something that's important that you purposely live out, all right? And it says, because the love covers a multitude of sins. What's it talking about? What it's saying is that the flaws, the, the foibles, the, the things that are wrong with us, the things that would annoy uh, each other and, and cause us to be divided, you know, the, the, that love, you know, when it's the love of God in us, causes us to be able to look just like Jesus did while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, that if Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, then, you know, while this person is still growing in the Lord and he has all these imperfections, of course, not like us, you know, we, we become perfect, right? No, we, we all have enough stuff in us that, that we could, uh, you know, annoy each other to the place where our fellowship would break down. But that isn't what God desires. God desires that that, that, that love that we have would, uh, would cover over uh, those kinds of things. Be hospitable to one another without complaint. As each has received the gift and play in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And so, you know, we're going to take it from there. But just, you know, I, I want to make uh, this one point. And that is that, you know, in life, you know, the question that I, I want to just pose and get us to think about for a week is this. What's the direction you're leaning? You know, I mean, in life, if you you know, if you're making mistakes, uh, you know, in, in the way that you're loving and serving God, you know, what's the direction? You know, this tree stump that I'm sitting on is a tree that I took down over the weekend. And uh, at some point, <laughs> I, I, I miscalculated. I didn't realize that the tree was leaning up a hill. And so it was going to fall the wrong direction. You know, we did get a rope around it, my son and I, and we managed to pull it the right direction. You know, but, I, but you know, what, what direction are you leaning? You know, because if you don't want to end up over there, all right, Sometimes, in preparation, you need to be leaning in the other direction. And, uh, you know, in so many things in life, you know, what is the drift? What is the direction that, 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 that we're, we're moving in life? And uh, are we really laying hold of those things that God said should be set in our heart? You know, that our love for one another, our, our, our salvation, you know, these, these kind of things are supposed to be sets in us. You know, are they, are they firmly anchored? You know, and I, and I talked about the wisdom of always tying a rope around a tree before you start cutting it. Because you, you might have to give it a tug. You might have to get a pull in the right direction. You know, how are we preparing ourselves so that when those times come, when we hit those crises, uh, that we'll be able to pull ourselves in the right direction? You know, because, you know, the one who's going to be helping us to go the right direction is God. But, you know, we have a responsibility to exercise the authority that he gave us uh, to go the direction that, that God is directing us. And with that, I'm going to say God bless you, and we'll see you next time on the 10-minute video summary.